Welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, um, please do like this video if you enjoy it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you would like to see more um, of my face, I guess. But in today's video, we are going to be talking about some diabetes related stuff. As you can see from today's title, I have been on my insulin pump for a month now by the time I am filming this video. Um, when I upload it, I do not know, but on the day of filming this video, which is the 19th of April, I have been on the insulin on my insulin pump for a month. And having had diabetes for 19 years and always being on insulin injections, I really wanted to give you guys an update of how I have personally found my first month on an insulin pump. Now everybody is going to have very individual and very different experiences. This is just going to be my experience, how I have found it. I have made a couple of notes on my phone to kind of prompt me um, of things to talk about. I would love to know if you are a viewer watching or who also has type 1 diabetes and if you do I would love to know if you're on injections or if you're on a pump or if you're currently on injections and thinking about going on a pump. Um, maybe this video will help you decide if you want to go onto the Omnipod 5. First of all, in case you guys aren't aware of what an insulin pump is or specifically Specifically, the system I am on, which is called a hybrid closed loop system. I'm just going to read a very quick like summary of what a hybrid closed loop system is. You might have also heard it being referred to as an artificial pancreas. Um, so sometimes that's what it's also called. But basically, when you have type 1 diabetes, your pancreas can't produce insulin. Um, like someone without type 1 diabetes would. There are different types of parts that come with a hybrid closed loop system. So first of all, you have to have a glucose monitor. So I have my Dexcom G6, and then that glucose monitor has to be able to kind of talk to or communicate with an insulin pump. So I have my Omnipod 5. This is what my insulin pump looks like. And then there's what we call an algorithm. So it's a computer program that reads the blood sugar information and works out how much insulin is needed depending on whether your blood sugar is rising above your target or uh, dropping below your target. Um, the algorithm can, can be part of an app. Um, so in my case, it's part of a separate device, which is my uh, controller. Um, or it can be part of the insulin pump itself. There's different types of insulin pumps, but for me, when I was making the decision of the pump that I wanted to start on, I wanted something that didn't have any tubing attached, and the Omnipod is the only one at the moment um, that was, is what we call a patch pump, so it didn't have any tubing. So. Basically what this algorithm does is when the sensor and the insulin pump kind of talk to each other, um, I will have like a set target blood glucose. So for anyone with type 1 diabetes, our target blood glucose is between 4 millimoles and 10 millimoles, sort of 70% of the time, which on injections is really, really difficult to achieve. And I think most of the time I was achieving like 31% in range. So 31 percent of my day or time between four millimoles and ten millimoles was yeah 30 percent of the time um and it's really really difficult to kind of get that right on injections so what the algorithm of these pumps will do uh, or shall i say my particular pump is that you will have a set target my target is 6.7 meaning that if my blood sugar rises above that, my pump will will detect the Dexcom reading um, and it will try and give me more insulin to try and bring me down to a target of 6.7. And if I go below my target of 6.7, it will actually like 
reduce or completely cut out or stop the insulin that it's delivering to avoid me going into a hypoglycemic episode which is where your blood sugar drops below four um, and then you have to have like some glucose to bring it back up quite quickly. This is like a very rapid explanation of these systems, but this is not really what this video is about. This is about my experience with the insulin pump um, that I have been on, but I just wanted to give a brief summary. Um, if you guys actually want me to do a separate video based on insulin pumps in general, then do let me know and I am more than happy to do that. First thing really has been my experience of wearing a pump. So I have been wearing glucose sensors on my body since 2020. I started on the Libra 2 to start with, uh, then I moved on to the smaller sensor, the Libra 3. And then once I had actually made the decision that I wanted to go onto a pump, I had to go onto the Dexcom G6 because at the time that was the only one that was compatible with the Omnipod 5 and currently is still the only compatible sensor um, for the hybrid closed loop system. So I was kind of used to like wearing something on my arms, solely on my arms. Um, as you can see, I have got the Omnipod on my arms, but there are a couple of other places where I can wear it. So I can wear it on my legs, I can wear it on my stomach, or I can wear it on my like upper buttocks area. Um, so I have a few different options, but wearing it has actually not been too much of a problem. I have been able to wear it over gym clothes. I've been able to wear it over jeans. Um, I've worn short sleeve tops, long sleeve tops, um, you know, bulky coats, um, and it's been absolutely fine. I personally haven't had any issues with it. Um, there are some areas that can be a little bit more sore than others, I guess, but for me, um, I've never really had any issues, luckily, with my skin. I don't have very sensitive skin, so in terms of like wearing um, the, the adhesive and sort of the places where I have been wearing it, it hasn't caused too much of an issue. The only thing I kind of get, whoa, the sun is coming out. <laughs> The only thing I kind of get when I take it off is like a tiny little lump where like the little cannula that flicks in sits. Um, but then after a day or so, it kind of goes goes back down. So wearing it hasn't actually been too much of a problem. Um, the only places I haven't actually worn it so far is sort of my upper buttocks. I've only worn it on my arms, uh, one of my legs, and on my stomach and different areas I've already noticed kind of absorb the insulin differently um, and that's quite normal. Um, I noticed that quite a bit as well when I was on injection so it's kind of been interesting getting to know how the different areas where the pod is or the pump is have kind of absorbed the insulin. When you um, have type 1 diabetes you are encouraged to either inject insulin or give in insulin via a pump 10 to 15 minutes before you eat um, because our pancreas isn't there and ready to release insulin when you start eating carbohydrates we have to give the insulin time to travel from you know our legs or our arms or our stomach or buttocks um, to where it it needs to in order to to get the insulin working effectively. And sometimes I would, well, most of the time actually, I would really struggle to give myself insulin injections 10 to 15 minutes before I started eating something. It was just more of a faff in terms of like having to get my pens out, or dial up the units I needed after working out how much insulin I needed. Um, and then actually doing the injection, you know, it was all much more of a faff. Whereas now it's so much more discreet, it's so much more convenient because I just have to open my controller and I literally just type in the amount of carbohydrates I'm having, um, what my blood glucose sensor is, which it pulls the information through from my sensor anyway. And um, I can just literally tap and, and 
give that extra insulin for my food way in advance like it's incredible I could even be like driving and if I know that I'm going to be home in 15 minutes and I'm going to eat something in 15 minutes I could do that or it's just been so much more flexible um also with the fact that when I was on injections I could only give an injection every two hours whereas now if I have a main meal um and then 20 minutes later I want a dessert or something else it's so much more flexible in terms of like have being able to eat something extra without having to do an extra insulin injection. So in terms of like freedom, it has been so life changing. I literally can't even like get to grips with how life changing it has been for me. The reason it's called a hybrid closed loop system is for the reasons that I literally just spoke about. You know, you the pump isn't going to fix diabetes, it's not gonna do everything for you. You still have to let these pumps know when you're gonna be eating something because um, it will detect that your blood sugar is rising due to food. Um, and it just really confuses the system and then it can't really cope with um, very high blood sugars. I fortunately haven't um, been unwell since I've been on the pump so I haven't been able to experience managing my blood sugars on a pump whilst being unwell because when you're unwell you tend to have quite high blood sugars. Um, but I have had a few low blood sugars and I think I've managed them quite well actually. Um, when you are on a hybrid closed loop system, you end up on half um, the amount of your hypo treatment. Um, so it's just been trying to like get that right and it's all kind of trial and error. I guess. The Omnipod 5 has something called an activity mode. So I am someone who um, goes to the gym uh, pretty much every week, um, either a few times a week or many times a week. It depends on how I'm feeling and how busy I am. Um, and I do pole fitness as well. So um, the fact that I have an activity mode on there, uh, which basically means that the 6.7 millimole target that I told you my pump is set to, Activity mode actually raises that to 8.3 millimoles because during activity and exercise That's when you're more likely to I'm really sorry about this lighting guys The weather is just all over the place. I can't really control that. So when you exercise you're more likely to drop in blood glucose and more often than not whenever I would go to the gym I would be having to cut my activity short or my gym sessions short um or be you know sipping on like lucas aid or something like that because my blood sugars would just start dropping um don't get me wrong my blood sugars with activity mode still have dropped but not as much as they did when i was on injections because now the pump sort of starts to detect that my blood sugars are dropping because it predicts what's gonna happen an hour in advance. Um, sometimes I don't actually get below four, which is amazing. Um, activity mode makes such a difference. And obviously um, I can leave activity mode on for a couple of hours um, because again, sometimes I would come home from the gym when I was on insulin pens and um, I would even hypo a couple of hours later just because of like how much energy your muscles use when you um, do exercise. So it's just been amazing and literally it's so easy to turn on and off. Um, I will show you guys what the controller looks like in a minute and how I kind of use it on a daily basis. Um, but everything is just so quick, easy and convenient and it's taken so much stress away which is exactly what you need and you want when you have type 1 and you have to think about it 24-7, 365 days of the year. I have seen a overall improvement in my glucose levels and sort of my management 
in the month that I've been on it and it's been absolutely incredible. Um, I have no sort of shame in sharing my figures and numbers um, because I think numbers don't define you and I think it's really important to know that, you know, everybody is going to be slightly different even though we all have no, we don't all have type 1 diabetes, but everyone that does have type 1 diabetes, you know, nobody is going to be the same. And my control, despite trying my hardest to get it good, it wasn't good. Um, so I have to get a blood test called a HbA1c um, every couple of months, which gives me like an average of what my blood sugar control has been in the past three months. Um, it only measures three months because um, that is how long your red blood cells live for and the HbA1c blood test is actually checking how much glucose is stuck to your red blood cells. So the higher the number of your HbA1c, the more sugar is stuck to the red blood cells. And the national kind of standard um, to avoid long-term complications is to have a HbA1c of between, I think it's 48 to 58 millimoles. Um, and mine has never been below 60. As, as far as I can remember since being diagnosed in 2005, I can't remember having a HbA1c below, below 60. Um, so, as you can see, my control on injections was not great, um, but my predicted HbA1c, which I can see on my, like, apps and my data, is currently predicted to be below 60. So I'm really interested to find out when I next have my um, HbA1c blood test taken to see how much of an improvement there has been. Um, a side note is that actually there are dangers in having your HbA1c drop too quickly. So there can be complications from that um, to do with your eyes especially. So, you know, even though these systems are amazing, they can cause complications, which is kind of the opposite of, of what you would think if your blood sugars actually come back down into range too quickly, if you've been sort of running high for, for a long amount of time. So it's all learning, it's all um, something new and just something to, to be kind of wary of, but I have seen a huge improvement already and that's because I've just been trying to engage my best with the pump and do everything that I've been recommended to do and, and, and know that is good for optimizing the, the hybrid closed loop systems. In terms of like things that I've had to troubleshoot, um, touch wood I've not had too many bad experiences <laughs> but there has been a few occasions where the controller or my actual pump have started to beep because there is a particular issue. Um, the only times really when the pod, I keep saying pod because it is a pod, it's an omnipod, um, but the only time when the pod or my controller would actually start beeping was if um, my blood sugars were really, really high and my pump was trying to work too hard to bring me back down, it would start, well, it has started beeping to alert me to do something, um, like check my blood sugar by doing a finger prick test, um, check my ketones, um, and then to kind of, you know, let the controller know that I'm okay sort of thing. Um, it will also beep if I am um, low, so below four for too long as well, because again, it starts to think, oh my goodness, are you okay? Um, and notices that the insulin delivery has been stopped for um, maybe a long period of time. Also, if there is a problem with the app, so this is actually an Android phone that has been disabled just for the Omnipod 5 app use. So if there is an issue with the app, sometimes it will say um, that there's a problem and that if it occurs again, I have to contact customer services. 
In all honesty, it's happened quite a few times, but I've not actually contacted customer services because my insulin delivery hasn't been affected. So there's that. And also if my controller is not receiving any glucose sensor readings from my Dexcom, it will also start to kind of moan at me. <laughs> or scream at me is a better word. Other than that, I mean, I've, there's been a few occasions where I've put a new pod on and sometimes it takes hours and hours for my blood glucose levels to come back down into range. It almost feels like the area is just not absorbing the insulin very well. Um, and in those moments I kind of start to panic, but I've never so far in this last month had a pod that's like been leaking or that's needed replacing because it's faulty. Um, so th there's always things that you kind of have to troubleshoot when you're on an insulin pump. I still have to carry my insulin pens around with me because if, for whatever reason my pod failed and I had no other way of I mean I always carry a spare pod with me as well um but if that one also failed then I would have to revert back to my insulin pens so that I would still be getting some form of insulin um so this is what the pods look like when they've not been opened and I have actually done some videos on my diabetes Instagram page, which is linked down below in my description. So if you are interested in um, knowing sort of what I do more day to day or just interested in learning about diabetes, then there is a good way to kind of follow me and see what I'm up to. Um, and then I have my controller. So it's my little Omnipod controller with my two little glucose stickers from Organizing Chaos. This is basically what the um, home screen looks like. So it will tell me that I'm in automated mode, which is like the, the system adjusting my insulin. It will give me my blood sugar from my Dexcom. Um, and then there's features like uh, it will tell me when my next pod is due to be changed. So I have to change it every three days, um, less if there's obviously a problem with it, but if not, then it is every three days. Um, and then it will tell me the last time I gave some insulin for a meal or like if I needed if the pod wasn't working very well and I needed to give myself an extra dose of insulin to try and bring me to range, um, I would do, uh, that would appear here as well. And then the little one that looks like a bottle is basically where I put like how many carbohydrates I'm eating. It's kind of hard to show you guys. How many carbohydrates I'm eating. I can use my uh, sensor to pull up my blood glucose and then it would kind of like tell me um, so if I put like 10 grams of carbs in, for example, it would say you need 1.2 units. And then I would just like confirm to, to say that I wanted that to be delivered. Um, there's loads of different features. It's, it's really cool. Um, another feature that I quite like is you can get this like little sensor graph. So this is, this shows me the last three hours of what's been happening. So like that's when I had my lunch. Um, so I gave myself insulin for my lunch. That's been my blood glucose for the last three hours. Um, the green line that you can see, that's my target glucose. Um, and then this basically means that it's uh, started to uh, pause my insulin because it's noticed that I'm like going below that green line, so below my target. Um, so that's quite cool to be able to see what the pump is doing as well. Um, overall, I don't have like really negative things to say about it so far. I think overall it's been um, a, a positive experience. You know, I've been on a few days abroad away with it. Um, I can do more of a diabetes travel essential and tips and tricks uh, in a separate video if you guys would find that interesting. Um, in terms of the controller itself, I've had uh, no major issues with it either. Um, you have to charge it for like an hour every day, but 
I could probably get away with charging it less than that to be honest um, because it holds up the battery really well especially if you're not using it that much and also I really like the fact that you can get some really cool um, covers for the Omnipod so you can like jazz it up um, so I have these two here from this company um, which is called Sugar Fam Colour and I will just show you what they look like um, in terms of like people looking at my diabetes tech I honestly don't care anymore like I don't care that people can see my diabetes tech I proudly will show it off but I do often catch people looking at my arms or you know when I'm wearing the tech and they look at me very funny because I think people just don't know what it is but if someone came up to me in the street or something like that and asked me what it was I'd be more than happy to to let them know what it is but these are the little covers that I have and they are so freaking cute. I haven't actually worn this one yet, but I definitely want to. In fact, <laughs> my pod at the moment is actually the right way round. Um, so I can probably show you guys what it would look like. So how cute is that? Oh, I love it. I don't actually know if I've missed anything, but those were basically the things that I have written down to kind of talk about. Um, if you guys have got any questions for me and I, I have completely forgotten to cover anything, then please do leave them down below. Um, one thing I did just remember because I was showing you... Um, what the pump was doing and that it was like stopping my insulin delivery sometimes it will say that my blood sugar is going down and I'm sort of panicking but I have learnt to trust the pump sometimes it says I'm going down and I just leave it and don't like treat as a hypo or just like wait out and see what it does and it does bring my blood sugar back up without me having to treat it as a hypo so that's been amazing also i think that with my high blood sugars it does bring me down but i feel like it takes a bit longer it takes a couple of couple of hours i would say but still i am just so grateful for this piece of technology I'm so grateful that, um, you know, in the UK we don't have to pay for this technology and I just can't believe what a difference it has made to my life and to my diabetes in this last month and it makes me really excited for the future. Um, you know, I wouldn't say it makes me less anxious because I'm still always quite anxious about the future. It's unknown, it's unpredictable. It definitely makes me look forward to just having more freedom really it's it's amazing so yeah this video is probably really really long now and I do apologize but hopefully I've been good with editing it down as much as I can so yes like I say if you do have any questions about the Omnipod, please, please do feel free to either comment them down below or head over to my diabetes Instagram where I can answer any more of your questions. Leave it a like, leave it a thumbs up. That's the same thing. I've lost the plot. <laughs> Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to and enjoyed this video and want to see more. Um, and I'm going to stop rambling now and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Bye.